Hi everyone, this is Joni and welcome to Kairos Media PH. So, I've decided to make this video for those who wanted to learn basic editing, especially that during this pandemic, most of us are maximizing the online platform wherein people are learning new skills like photo or video editing for their business, for online teaching, and for personal uses. Some also use this platform for self-expression and also as a form of therapy, especially that during this crisis, na may iba -iba tayong outlet to cope with our own different struggles. So for today, I'm going to teach you basic editing for total beginners using the newest version of Adobe Premiere Pro. But before we start, please show your love and support by clicking the subscribe button below and hit the bell button for my small channel to grow. This could really help my channel and through your support, it keeps me on creating. So first things first. Some people take this for granted, but it's the most important thing in editing. So you must organize your files well. You must arrange your materials where you can access them easily, like separating videos from photos and audio as well. Don't ever delete them from your computer once you use them in your Premiere project because Premiere won't be able to locate them and would appear as missing files. Once you've organized your mats, Let's proceed to clicking the editing software icon. So, a lot of people are asking me what editing software that I use for my videos. And here it is. I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro which I updated to the 2020 14.3 version. So, we're going to explore some of its features along the tutorial. As you can see in its newest version, they also changed its loading screen to a white dominant background. And just this June, they modify their logo and turn it to dark purple color. Same sila ng After Effects at iba pang mga Adobe apps, kaya nakakalito minsan at mahirap differentiate. So anyway, as you launch the start screen, there's an option whether you want to create a new project or just open your past project. And in this side, you can see your recent projects. And for this tutorial, we're going to hit new project. For project name, we'll just name it Sample. Then for location, you may choose where to save this project. I'm just gonna open browse to select desktop. So first, you must learn and understand your workspace. Be familiarized with the different tools and its function and navigate around the workspace panels. Also, make sure you're in editing mode. So let's start with your project panel where you can import your media photos, your videos, or any audio. There are three ways on how to import. First, go to File, Import, then select File. The shortcut key for Windows is Ctrl i For Mac, Command-I. Second way is to just drag the file down to the project panel. Third option is to click Media Browser to open the file that you want to select. Then, right-click Import, or just drag it on the timeline panel. So those are your options to import your media. Pili inyo na lang kung saan kayo mas comfortable. You may organize your files by clicking this new bin icon here. It just depends on how you arrange your files. For me, I just separate video mats from photo mats, audio files, and etc. So from here, just drag the video to your timeline panel. This creates a new sequence for your project. One important thing to take note is to always check your sequence settings before you start editing. For the editing mode, we'll just choose custom. For the time base, it depends on what frame rate you used on your original footage. They usually use 24 FPS or 30 FPS. For my footage, I use 24 FPS for a cinematic look, so I'm gonna choose 24 FPS. Then the rest is already set. Square pixels per aspect ratio, iframe only MPEG, then click OK. So as you can see here, you can just go through your video by moving your playhead as you click your cursor, or just scrub back and forth, or simply hitting the space bar or display button to preview your footage. 
So as you move the playhead, it correlates what's seen on the program monitor. You can also size and rotate your video by double clicking on the program monitor or go to the effects controls and make some adjustments like position, scale, rotation, and even opacity. Let's just leave our opacity to 100%. Now let's go back to our timeline sequence. You may zoom in and out the timeline by using this slider below or just pressing plus or minus sign on your keyboard. And now to cut the video, click on the footage. And as you go to the edge, a red arrow appears, then just drag it on. Another way is by using the razor tool, which is found in this area along with other tools. Or you can just press C. Then from the razor tool, change it to selection tool or just press V. Click on that clip, then press delete. Another way is just by using the keys Q and W. Let's just position your playhead to where you want the clip to start, and then press Q. And to trim, press W. And for a video, we don't need the audio clip since we're just going to put an upbeat music background. So to remove the audio, we need to unlink it from the video. So hit right click. Then unlink or just press Ctrl L. Click on the audio clip, then press delete. Then I'll put another footage. I'll go back to our project panel, and as I double click on the footage, it will show its preview on the source monitor. So you can already select here the part that you need. Use the playhead to scrub back and forth, or just hit the play button or space bar to preview. Press I to select which part you'd like to start, then O to mark out the video. So if you want to just select the video, go to this icon to drag the video only. Now you can connect them together by just dragging the clip or click the space between them, then hit delete. This is also known as triple delete. To apply some transitions, let's go to the effects tab. Then this will reveal these panels. The cool thing about the newer versions of Premiere is that they have this essential graphics and sound. So basically, what we have under Essential Graphics are designed motion graphics templates that you can just easily drag to your timeline and customize. I'll talk more of this and how to use it for our next video. Since we're just on the basics, let's find simple transitions for the video. Click on Effects. As you can see here, you can also find presets that were downloaded from the internet. We'll use that for our next tutorials. We're just going to find simple transitions, so hit Video Transitions. Select a transition based on your preference. I like to place a fade-in effect at the beginning of my clip, so I'll select Cross the Soul. Another way of finding effects or transitions is just by typing it on the search bar right here. Then just drag it at the beginning of the video, wherein you can also adjust its duration. You can also find here an effect that would stabilize the video since I didn't use a tripod while filming this so I'll just type here warp stabilizer. Drag it on your clip and you can make adjustments by going to effect control panel. Then wait for it to analyze. So the transition that I'd like to place between my videos is a light leak to create a cinematic look. So I'll import a light leak that I've just downloaded online. Place it above the two videos. Notice that the video doesn't have the same frame size to our sequence, so we just hit right click, then scale to frame size to match our settings. Then go to effect controls, hit blend mode under opacity, then select screen. You can also adjust its opacity. Let's just go with 80%. Next is we're going to place a music background for our video. Let's import this non copyright music that I downloaded. Then let's select the part that we need here in the source monitor. Again, I for mark in and O for mark out. Then drag this drag audio only icon to your timeline and place it under the video footage. You may also expand the track by double clicking on the general area or just drag the line here. As you can hear, the music has already a fade in effect at the beginning. Now, what I'm going to do is just make a fade out effect. 
So let's go to the effects panel and type crossfade. Then drag the constant power effect to the end of the video. You can adjust the duration of the effect as well. Another way to adjust the volume with specific points is by clicking on the pen tool or just hit P. Create points to adjust the volume level to create a fade out effect. To preview the video without lag, place its markers in and out and let's go to sequence and hit render in and out. Once it's done, we can check the video out. And I think it's good already. And just for the sake na mapakita na kung paano mag-export, let's just select these areas, these video clips, for a sample kung paano lang mag-render. Mag so here, let's make sure you select your work area by dragging its markers to specify the beginning and the end of the work area. And we're ready to export. Click File. Select Export, then Media. Its shortcut key is Control M. For best settings, let's use the format H.264. Let's proceed to Presets. There's a lot to choose from depending on your preferred quality. Let's just use YouTube 1080p Full HD. Let's click on the output name to set the name of your video file and to where you're going to save the file. So these are the basic things, you just need to take note and as you go down here, you can see the memory of the whole video. Then let's hit export and we're done. I know editing is kind of overwhelming with all those panels and all those technicalities but the most important thing is to explore, explore, and explore. And that's how you discover and learn things on your own. And I personally learned it the same way and I just continue to grow and to hone in my craft. And that's it for today. If you want me to make another video tutorial on editing, place your comments below kung ano pa yung mga gusto pang matutunan. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe and let's continue to pray for current situation right now. God bless you and stay tuned for our next video.